history of Bowman Gray Stadium is something that is unlike any other racetrack in the country. You feel it, you see it, sometimes you hear it. As you're sitting there lined up and they'll be screaming at you, whether it be cussing you, flipping you off, cheering for you, whatever the case may be, and I love that. My family's been racing there since I don't know when, um, so it's kind of like in my blood to race there. There's nowhere else like it. The competition, the fans, uh, just, the, just the scenes of it, everything. Just nothing like it. We felt like coming into to this season that the success we had last year, um, the building that we did in the off season, we would uh, we'd be successful. Uh, last year we were um, we ended up second second the points to Tim, uh, just barely missed it. Had a, had a great year uh, with with building a new car and some restructuring that we did, adding a second team, bringing Will Spa back on to crew chief for me. Um, we really felt like coming into this year that, that we would uh, we'd be able to ramp things up and have a good chance at it. I think that it, you know as competitive as Bowman Gray has become in, in, in every division that uh, there's several cars now um, that you have to beat on a weekly basis. So uh, with the preparation that, that Will and all the guys in the shop had done over the off season and, and the equipment that, that Kevin and Jeff had, had enabled them to prepare, uh, we felt like we were going into this to this year as prepared as we've ever been to win a championship. The history of Bowman Gray Stadium is something that is unlike any other racetrack in the country. It's the fan base, it's the following, it's everything about that that racetrack that it just it just seems to to be a whole different atmosphere than any other short track you'll go to for a weekly show throughout the country. When you walk out onto the racetrack opening night for the Hayes George 200, that place is full. The the energy that that you feel when you just drive into Bowman Gray Stadium is big. But when you walk out onto that racetrack for opening night, and you see the fans, and you hear the fans, and there's no other fan base or there's no other track out there that has the fan base that Bowman Gray has on a weekly basis. When you when you go to Bowman Gray, the fans are a huge part of of what keeps you know us as drivers and our teams and our sponsors coming back on a weekly basis. The, the next to the last race was a big night for us. We knew that, that we needed to get our sit. We needed to gain a few points that night. Uh, we were hoping that we could go into the season finale where Tim and I, who, it would be basically be heads up. Whoever outruns who wins the championship. We closed that gap, but we didn't close it quite enough. We needed a car between us. So. Um, I had very high hopes going into the final night that we would have a really good race car. The problem is I felt like Tim would have a really good race car too because he and I had finished right together so many times throughout the season. So, you know, when it comes down to one final race, one final night, and you've got a guy that you have to beat by one spot, um, a lot of times you don't realize just how difficult that can be. The first thing is survival. You have to finish this race. You have to basically get yourself to the to the last leg of it. You know, you need to be in that last to the to the final ten laps with a shot. That's what I kept thinking is we have to keep ourselves in position to get to the end of this race and have a shot. A few times now we've won the season finale race. And you're you're in victory lane, which is where you want to be for winning a race. But the championship celebration is going on out in the infield. Uh, our team meeting at the beginning of the year, Will had said, I want to be in that grass, I want to be in the infield. When I knew we had won it, I, I, it was just a sense of accomplishment that that is something we had set out to do this season. 
And even though we didn't win the final race like we've done in years past, we were able to, to achieve that goal of, of winning a championship. And we've won a championship for Jeff Day, for Kevin Powell. I knew Jeff had never had a championship. All these years he's raced and, and had success and had race wins and so many good things, he never had a championship. So to, to be able to finally accomplish that goal um, and, and get a championship for Jeff and for Kevin and for this team, um, it's about them, honestly, more than it is me. I know how I know how hard they all work. I know the effort that gets put into this program. So the feeling of, of just accomplishment that, that they finally get to celebrate in that infield as champions at Bowman Gray Stadium was was just something that you almost can't describe it. You know, it's it's just a big a big feeling of accomplishment. Still speechless, you know, because like I never thought going into the season that I'd win a championship. Um, that's it. like from two years ago to now, I feel like I've came a long way. We had three pit schools going into the season. That's uh, drive hard, drive clean, and have fun. And uh, we did all three of them. Well, we had about four to three weeks of preparation for the first race, and. Four weeks, we were really good. Um, so I was really confident going into the season over here that we could win that race. We parked up in Dillon Ward. You know, that helped us a lot. Uh, we got great sponsors that came on board this season too. And my guys, you know, we put in a lot of work uh, throughout the week. Um, we had four to five guys come over every week um, throughout the season. And that, that really is what changed us because we got a lot of things done before Thursday, we would up on Thursday. It was just, it was the little things that helped us out a lot. The fans, uh, you can race anywhere else and you won't have 20,000 fans there. I don't, I don't honestly know what it is, but like I can feel their energy while I'm sitting in, to, in the car on their caution laps. You can look over and they're just, they're right there. And it, it's just really cool. What What's going through your head driving through the gate Saturday morning? I don't think I slept Friday night. It, I, it just kept me up all night. I worked so hard to get to this, this moment, and it can just be taken away just like that. And, you know, I prayed and I prayed. Um, it was just nerve wracking throughout the day, man. And, and we had a the morning practice. I didn't even get to practice in the morning. We had a, we had a clutch slipping, so we had to come home and change that. Um, so that really got my nerves going, too. When I took the white flag and Dad was telling me that there's no pressure from behind. I think I was smiling ear to ear. Um, it, was, it was just a surreal moment. I just really thought of my guys. You know, that without them, I wouldn't be racing. Um, Brady and Tucker put a lot of work in throughout the week. Well, I always wanted to do a donut or like a burnout of some sort, and Dad always told me I couldn't do it. Um, but he's, I, I didn't even ask him. I mean, I just won a championship. I want to know it. You know, that was pretty cool. Um, there was a lot of people there, uh, you know, they had all their phones out, you know, people just cheering. My brother didn't tell me, but he already had champagne and confetti. <laughs> Brady and Tucker have been with me since 2019, uh, my freshman year, my, kind of really my first uh, season of racing big cars. Got Gage and uh, Luke Griffel, um, you know, Blake. Uh, there are a lot of people that helped me uh, at the track and here, so I'm doing we couldn't race without them. I just knew I had to just be smart all season to make no mistakes. Luckily, I think I only made one mistake, and then I'd probably done the same thing again if I had to redo it. Uh, just picked the wrong lane, but uh, I felt like we had a good shot going in. I mean, we've We've been building up to it, coming up to this season, so it just finally all clicked. The car was good from get-go. Uh, first three races, I think I finished second, third, and first right off the get-go. The main thing was the car was just awesome all year. Like, it, Dylan Ward and them, they just made me look good. They, they started finally putting pressure on me. Uh, 
I didn't do bad on double points nights. It's just they finished one or two and I finished like fifth. And uh, I really had to turn it, turn it up, like make sure we got there even quicker. Um, it definitely started making it more nerve wracking around that time. And it turned out I draw where I thought I was gonna draw in the back like I did all year. The, the car was so good, I, I didn't care where I started. I knew I could get there. It's just, just knowing where I was gonna start. That was the main thing. Just be smart, don't do nothing stupid. Praying nothing breaks on the car, don't get a flat tire, something stupid happens. So. T tell me about your celebration. What, what, what were some of your favorite special moments while you were celebrating out the field or in the pits or whatever? Um, man, there's a lot of them. Seeing my, my boss man first, he spots for me. Grabbing my son, hug, hugging him. My, my sister, uh, she started coming to a lot of races towards the end of the season, seeing her. I don't know if I can pinpoint one, it's just seeing everybody that helped me get there. There was tears behind my eyes, but somehow they stayed there. Uh, I don't know how, just floods of emotion. Like it just all finally hit me that we finally did it. it took 10 years to win the championship, so it was a lot of emotions. This is what I tell people all the time. I'm not going to the racetrack if I feel like I'm going to finish last or middle of the pack. I work hard here at this shop. This shop is a dirty shop because I'm here working as hard as I can work and go to my regular job and don't have time to really sit here and clean up a lot. But uh, we work really hard here. I do building my cars, the motors. I do it all myself in-house here. The failure, I get really ill. Uh, I don't like to lose. I'm very competitive. So yes, when I go to the track, I feel like they're going to have to outrun me. I've done this 41 years, and thank God, uh, the good Lord has really blessed me with racing. Bowman Gray is a place you got to be patient, you got to be smart, and there again, not have any trouble because when well, you got people like Chuck Wall, Brandon Brendel, Kerry, you know, and even, even Isaac Harris being a rookie, he run good. So you got to have a good season, you got to play smart, and not get yourself into problems. And when when problems happen, you got to figure out a way of getting out of them without getting into more problems. There's nothing you can do at Bowling Gray to what you say, back it up from a year before because every year is going to be different. You're going to have different people or somebody's going to run a little better than they did last year. You may run a little better. There's no other racetrack you're going to go to that I know of, North Carolina, Virginia, South Carolina, that you're going to go that's got that many people of all levels from people that's taking their light bill money to come to the track to, to your business people that start watching you and ready to sponsor you. Do you feel the energy from the fans? Oh yeah. Does, yeah, you does, can't does. not feel that energy. <laughs> uh, you feel it, you see it, sometimes you hear it. Because you're sitting there lined up and they'll be screaming at you, whether it be cussing you, flipping you off, cheering for you, whatever the case may be. And I love that because I always tell people, like Earnhardt used to say, it don't matter if they're booing you or cheering for you, either, whatever they're doing, as long as they're making noise, that's what matters. Bless her heart, my sister, she, she calls me every week anyway, and she's there every week, and she told me, just go do what you do. Every weekend and week out, you've been through this before, but all I can do is go there, race my race, and that's what we did. We didn't go there. And, and really ride. I mean, I had to ride a little bit the last race because Chuck and Isaac was racing each other and I didn't want to get in their mess and it, it'd take us out, but I wasn't going to get by them with them racing each other. And so we just sat right there and rode and there we were. What the first think? person I seen was uh, Blaze. Of course, he is just tickled to death. And, you know, and that's what you want to see. You want to see your your family, your kids, your, your friends celebrating, because that's what it's about. I get, to, I get to be the one celebrating, oh, he won, he done this, he done that. Well, it ain't no he, it's a we, because I sit in there and drive it. He's spotting. Uh, the kids that help me, I only have two, two young boys that help me on the car at the racetrack. Um, they're sitting there, they've never been 
in victory lane their life. Well, here they all won a championship this year. And it's, it's all of us. It's not a one-person deal. you got to remember, I'm 55. Uh, I don't know how many more years I'll be doing it. My God, over there, I've done had a heart attack over one year. I had to have open heart surgeries. I've been run over a truck. I mean, I've had a great year, even though I've had all those things go wrong over the past. But uh, And i got Blaze coming up, going to start racing next year. Uh, and, and that's great. If he, if he does as good as I've seen him do so far at Caraway and stuff, you know, I don't mind stepping back uh, and helping him because I've won a bunch of championships. I don't even know how many. I think it's 15 or so championships, over 500 some races. And like I said, I'm not bragging. I'm just stating the facts because the good Lord's been good to me. And uh, that's, that's all you can ask for. And I've, I've met so many good friends in racing. And I want to be able to sit back and enjoy being out of the car. To be able to win these championships at my age, so my mom and dad was in this thing a thousand percent. You know, they're, they're still with, just they've been able to celebrate these championships and wins and stuff. I, like I said a hundred times, the good Lord's been good to me. He's blessed me with racing. And all I can do is say, if you'll bless me, I'll climb in it every day.